If I was starting again with all the knowledge I've got today, and I really wish I actually could, then I'll share the three things that I'd be looking for. Then I'll also share where in the country I think you can get those things right now. So what should someone new to property investing be looking out for? Well, one of the classic debates in property is are you buying for capital growth or are you buying for rental income, maximizing your yield? And there's always a trade-off between the two, no matter what you do. If you're starting out as an investor, I think you want to go for a mix of both, somewhere in the middle of that spectrum. Really, I think all investors probably want to be trying to play somewhere in the middle, but especially new investors, because if you're looking purely for capital growth, you're going to be cutting it too fine on your cash flow. You're not going to have enough of a buffer. And if you're going purely for high yield, then that's something that can work as a strategy, but it tends to come with more challenges, which you're not going to be well equipped to deal with given that you're new. So the first thing I'd be looking for is an area and a type of property that gives me a mix of growth and yield. Also, if you're starting as an investor, you're probably starting without that much money. And even if you're starting with a lot of money, then you probably want to be making your mistakes when the stakes are low. You don't want to be piling straight into buying loads of properties all at once and buying the most expensive properties you can find. So I think you want to be looking for a relatively affordable area. When I started, I effectively did one extreme, then the other. And it's only later that I ended up at this happy medium. But if I was starting again, I'd be looking for those areas from the start. But there's another really important factor, which is your first experience is so important. It sets the tone for everything else you do in property. If you have a nightmare of a first experience, you're probably not gonna come back for more. Whereas if you have a really good experience, okay, you're definitely gonna have challenges along the way, but it will get you excited to save up for the next one and do more and more and more. I'd be looking for a pretty safe bet. I'd be looking to buy into an area that is strong and growing because that way there's going to be good tenant demand. When there's good tenant demand, two things happen. The first is that you don't have that thing that all investors are terrified of at first, which is not being able to find a tenant and having a property that you've just spent loads of money on and just not be able to find someone and end up having to settle for a far lower rent than you wanted. You hopefully instead have loads of interest and you have loads of choice, which means you're not gonna have to settle for anyone who you're uncomfortable with or who seems less than ideal. And hopefully you'll have a really smooth first tenancy which again is so important for setting the tone for everything that follows as an investor. So those are our criteria, a mix of growth and yield, relatively affordable prices, and strong and growing areas. Those don't sound like the most demanding and stringent criteria in the world, but they actually count out quite a lot of the country. The first area it rules out is London and quite a lot of the wider Southeast as well, because it's just too expensive. You can make investments in London. They're just about work on the numbers. And unless you're starting out with pots and pots of cash, it means you're gonna be really stretching yourself. You're gonna be putting a scary amount of money into one investment, and that's gonna put you under so much pressure. It's just not worth it. So London and a lot of the Southeast failed that relative affordability test. It also, and realize I'm being very broad brush here, rules out most of areas like the Northeast. The thing is, yields there tend to be pretty high because property prices are among the lowest in the country, but it fails this mix of growth and yield test that we set. It's going to be too much towards the yield and you're just not going to be getting that growth year on year. And it also rules out anywhere too rural, any little villages, small towns. There's just not going to be the rental demand. I think what you really want is absolutely tons of choice for reasons I've explained. So I would always be buying either in cities or in very established commuter areas. I wouldn't go broader than that for my first investment because I'd want a wide choice of tenants who were earning in a relatively stable position and going to give me an easy ride on that really important first tenancy. So that's where I'd rule out. But where would I specifically invest if I was starting again today? Well, the first area that I'd be looking at, which is an area I've invested in quite a bit myself anyway, is the East Midlands, so Nottingham and Derby in particular. Nottingham and Derby pass every test. You've got the affordability. There are also areas that are already strong and are growing all the time. 
lots of investment, lots of new employment going into those areas, and you get the yield there, but you also get the growth. Nottingham has been leading the way for capital growth in the UK, according to HomeTrack, for the last couple of years, and Derby is right up there as well. So you're already seeing that growth, and you're seeing strong rental growth in those areas as well. So I'd be looking to Nottingham and Derby as really safe bets, which is what you want as a first-time investor. Another area that I'd look at is Manchester, which is, again, very well established, strong and growing. Not as cheap, but the comparison for Manchester today would be London in terms of like an economic powerhouse that's a magnet for new graduates. So in terms of relative affordability there, it's obviously great value. And the other thing that Manchester has got going for it is a huge rental undersupply. Manchester has been through a boom over the last five years. So, so much new construction. So much so, there were so many units in the pipeline at one stage that people were saying there's going to be a huge oversupply of property. But it's turned out to be the exact opposite. Because Manchester has been such a success story, you've seen so many major employers, including the likes of BBC and ITV, moving there. There's so much demand that there's nowhere near enough rental property to go round. And we hear this all the time from the letting agents that we're repeatedly dealing with in the area, but you can see it in the rental data too. Manchester is among the fastest growing areas in the UK for rental growth. And that's because there is loads of demand, not enough supply, which just keep pushing the price up and up and up. So Manchester is somewhere we'll be looking. There's another area that's also among the fastest growing in the UK for rental growth, which is Birmingham. And Birmingham has loads in common with Manchester. They're quite similar in that they're both very young cities. They've both got a very high proportion of graduates and they have both had a lot of infrastructure investment. Birmingham has transformed over the last 10 years. Billions and billions of pounds have been spent and the city centre is unrecognisable. And you're seeing that reflected in demand to live in Birmingham, which again has pushed rents way up. So Manchester and Birmingham both leading the way when it comes to rental growth. So that's great for a new investor because again, it's giving you so much confidence that you're going to be able to find the type of tenant that you want and you're buying into an area that's already winning. It's already strong and it's just gonna keep getting better. But here's the thing, picking the right area is important. If you pick the right area, it can give you a real tailwind. But even if you pick the best possible area, you can still really mess up by making the wrong investment within that area. And there are three mistakes that I see beginners making again and again, even within these areas that mean they end up making really not great investments that end up costing them a lot of money. So watch this video next, where I'll explain what those three mistakes are and the simple actions you can take to make sure that you don't fall into that same trap.